My name is Efriye and I'm a brand executive. My first paycheck was 40 Ghana cities. Um, that was right after SS, uh, that's senior high school now. Uh, when I wrapped up with SS, I decided to work. So I registered with a janit janitorial company. And my first appointment was at Zenith Bank, Accra High Street. So I'd go there at 5 a.m., clean up, then leave at 6 before they come in. When I got it, I felt super independent, like, okay, yes, this is me right here. Uh, the 40 cities mainly was, I was a young woman who had just come out of school, so I was need to buy clothes, mostly. I buy clothes, I buy and I fix my nails with it. And I give my mother some, and I'll spend the rest, yes, in TNT, yeah, basically. Fast forward to when I started a real job, that's after university. Paycheck was 1,000 Ghana cities. I remember it very well. On the very first day, I, my bank gave me a description that I had the money in my account. I was stunned, so I just stood still. And I started thinking, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? I lived with my parents at that time, so I just kept on putting it in their account. I kept putting it there. And I'll take some out for TNT, eat the things that I want to eat. I've always had a taste for certain kinds of food that um, are really not all over the place. So I would buy the things I want to eat. And I love the part, the independence. That's what it gave me. It gave me so much independence because I wasn't paying lights bill. I wasn't paying water bill. I was in my father's house, so I could do anything I want with the money. When I left university, before I left, I used to hear stories about how people would carry files around and look for jobs. So before I left, I had a conversation with God and I told God that, God, here's the thing. I am leaving school. I do not want to be in that bracket. I do not want to hold a file and go from office to office to office. So while I was in school, I did a lot of networking. I would go for lots of events. I would meet people, smile and be nice to them. So I met my boss at an event and I told him that, oh, when I finish with the university, I want to come work with him. He says, okay, when you finish, hit me up. So I had a best friend in university at that time and we made plans. We wanted to go to do our service, do our service, do go for a rent a house and every single thing. She was supposed to live that dream, I wasn't. So I completed school, I was waiting for postings to come and then I was going to the state house one afternoon and I met my boss at my junction. And then he gave me a lift and I was like, oh, remember I had a question with you, I want to join. He says, yes, 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 come see me the next day. So I went to the office and then he just sent me to the head of programs like, okay, interview here. So I had that, my interview was on the spot. I didn't plan for it. And then what they had to do was, um, this was, I remember we are organizing an event in Accra. What are the things you need to do to make the event a success? So I just sat down, put the things together. And she's like, okay, here's what you go. When we are done, if when you pass, we will let you have it. So I was at home and then the HR manager called me and she says, yay, you are doing your service with us. I did a service and I am proud to say that I did my service really well. I went above and beyond because I used to have problems with my dad. It was an event company, event department. You stay out late 12 midnight. And my dad was not okay with it because he felt when you're doing your service, you shouldn't stay out till 12. But here's the case, if you're doing an event, until the event is over, you don't get to go home. So my dad logged me out a couple of times. I slept out a couple of times. Um, and he used to quote labor laws under the Ghana Labor Act, what, what, if you are doing your service, you shouldn't work beyond six o'clock, four o'clock. And that was a bone of contention. Yeah, we, we, really, we literally fought all the time because he didn't get it. But I understood where I was coming from and where I was going. This is what I want to do. And this is what the job demanded. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to use the word, but I literally sometimes just didn't listen to him. I'll come home and then he had locked the door. I will knock, 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 knock. My father will not mind me. I had to go and sleep at my friend. There was a time I even slept in the Porsche because my dad wouldn't let me. But I persevered. And when I finished my service, I was asked, do you want to take the mandatory leave? I was like, no, 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 no I want to work. So I sacrificed my mandatory leave and I worked. So when the salary came, they added the mandatory leave to my salary and I was taking. So I'll, after my service, they took me on. It's a very big media house and uh, we did lots and lots of events. So that was it. Draw up a schedule, um, get the contacts, book the venue, make sure the events run and everything. Then I did that for a while. And then um, one day at my office, my boss comes like, if we want to transfer you to the news newsroom. I'm like, okay, let's go. So I went. But I did it and that experience was good until one day 
I left. Um, my biggest problem at that point was transportation because I lived on the Spintex Road, actually inside the Spintex Road. And we all know that when you live in certain areas in Accra, you are deemed to be a rich person. Yeah, so I didn't have a female, but I had a male boss who was the least said the better. Okay, yeah, so he was worse off because he was just mean. Goodness, hey, like you literally kill yourself and you go and take the glory. Yeah, he was like that. I was really unhappy. I woke up in the morning, I don't want to go to work. And then I met my current boss. Um, I used to freelance for him. I have, a, I have a thing for creating order out of chaos. So when I like to make things happen. And after the event gene was still in me, so I used to organize events for him whilst I was working on the side. And he saw something in me that I didn't see. So he, one day he comes like, oh, if you want to give you a job, I'm like, well, I'm not ready, hold on. And went at it for almost a year. So one day I woke up and I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Actually, I didn't just wake up. I prayed. I, I prayed real hard because I, I kept on telling God that, look, this can't be it. You can't have brought me this far to give me this less than comforting job. So I have this offer. What do I do? Do I take it or not? And I had to wait for confirmation and it came. My pastor called my mom and then I felt it myself deep within me. So I didn't even officially resign. I never, I never go on leave by the way, I never go on leave, never. I've not been on leave before. So I had like accumulated leave. So I just took my leave days and I told my child, I'm going on leave for all the period. It was even over and I never came back. So yeah, I started in my new place and it's been great. And the rewards are coming in steadily. <laughs> um, because I can say that officially my church days are over. Like now, nah, like we are done with that. And it had to come with this new job, so it's been good. I remember when I was officially, it, no, truth be told, before I even got the car, I actually had a dream about it. I dreamt about the car. Like, I, I dreamt like three times or four times that the car was coming. So, I was expecting the car to come. I was expecting it. But I started doubting because the challenges were too much, like, insurmountable. How is the car going to come? Why would he give you a car? Who are you? Like, well, for a special reason. But the dreams kept on coming, the dreams kept on coming. And I'm like, okay, this has got to be something. It, it, it's not physical, there has to be some spiritual angle to it. I started going to church, but it took a long while for the car to manifest. But it, eventually it, manif it manifested. And the challenges are still coming because some people don't understand why my boss gave me a car. Who am I? Why do I? That when I'm a buy. Now that when I'm a buy, I'm a buy a If you add it, oh, okay, so you've been doing the boss, eh? Um, I'm going to stay here for a while, where I am currently, because there's a lot of work to be done. And um, I have plans where I want to see my boss, where I want to, me, myself, get to. And opportunities are opening up. So I plan to stay here for a while. Um, and yes, get a new car. Yes, yes get a whole, like, get more cars, bigger cars, better cars. That when I'm passing on the people just pause and go like, oh wow. And then they can see also that I can enjoy them saying about how this girl did nothing for that and I'll sit back and laugh at their ignorance and their small mindedness. It makes me happy. My name is Efriye eh? and I'm a brand executive. And yes, I am a girl that works her ass off. <laughs>